patch too. Be scrappy, uh, get the loose balls. Um, tell me what that feels like out there on the floor uh, when obviously uh, so much of your job is creation just to have these waves of guys alongside you um, helping to scrap alongside you. Yeah, um, it's what we've looked like all year. Um, every guy has a role uh, in the beginning of the season. Um, we, we made it a point to control what we can control in our role and in our effort and our energy and locking in on what our role is is part of that. Um, and that's just something that we come to the building every day, we come to work every day and we do. Um, we try to master our role and everybody obviously it looks different for, but um, we have a group of guys that embraces their role and tries to excel in it and that's why. The offense seemed to accelerate as the game went on. Uh, some of that seemed to be your ability to create for your teammates behind the three-point line. Um, tell me about maybe the cracks that you were start to or you were able to start to uh, uncover as the game went on. You know, um, they're obviously um, a, a good defensive team, and that's why uh, during the second round. Um, <clears throat> They um, did a really good job with a lot of ISO players last series in the Clippers. Um, and uh, it's it's hard to play against a defense that, that collapses and that is in the, in the gap um, without trusting your, your teammates and, your, and your, the rest of your guys on offense. And that's what I try to do. I just try to trust them. Um, when there was two on me, pass the ball, um, and then let them make a play from there. And the guys made shots, guys drove close and made plays, um, and that's why we were able to win. Say, Mark was just in here saying that, you know, against Dallas specifically, like, their swings maybe come more often in the game, you know, runs and stuff like that because of how much they maybe shoot threes. Um, I just wonder, like, as you're going through runs like you did in the third and the fourth, like, how much are you weighing that in the back of your mind, just, you know, the potential swings with them specifically? Yeah, um, I try not to get too high or too low, um, especially when you're playing a team like that. Like you said, it makes – a lot of shots. Um, but yeah, I just try to focus on the next possession, try to focus on what I can do to, to win the next possession for my team, whether it be offensively or defensively. Um, and a lot of times I find myself, once I get lost in that, um, going on a run or whatever it is. How do you feel in the postseason, postseason specifically, you've, uh, you've adjusted to this change and officiating this maybe happened since the All-Star break and what you see specifically today that, that maybe helped you get to the line? Um, Honestly, like, I like to just, like, play my game. Um, and however it goes, however it goes. Um, now, people say they've adjusted since All-Star break, since the playoffs. Um, honestly, haven't felt so. Like, every night I just go out there, try to attack the rim, take what the defense gives me. Um, and if some nights I get to the free throw line, some nights I don't, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, I try to just play my game through it. Yes, Shay. 29 assists tonight for you guys. Um, you mentioned trusting your teammates. Just what you like about the way that you guys move the ball, not really getting into playing one-on-one? -on -one. Yeah, um, like I said, against a defense like that, you have to move the ball. Um, you have to put them in closeouts. If you don't, it gets stagnant. Uh, their size, their length, their physicality comes into play. They're really good defenders. Um, so we knew that going in. Um, and. and it's kind of a little bit the same thing with New Orleans like against really good defenses. If you don't play like that, you get stuck and you can have a long night. Um, so, yeah, we just try to get better at it as the, the playoffs and the series goes on. Kind of similar teams in a way. Uh, how much of that playing the series against New Orleans helped you guys to pre prepare for the Mavericks? Yeah, uh, every every game is an opportunity to learn and get better. Um, and that's how we view it. Uh, win, lose, or draw. Tonight we obviously came out on the, the good side of things, but there's things we can learn from and things we'll try to get better at uh, for game two. There's, there's a lot of talk about your size, specifically like the team size, but it seemed like almost everybody had like a chance to have like verticality at the rim with Gafford, whether it was you or Hayward or Giddy. Like it felt like you guys all had, you know, a chance to defend that. How, how do you guys prepare for that specifically? Um, it's one of those things you either do, um, or like you, you lose, uh, especially against a team. Like they have really good offensive players, and you put two on them, and there's somebody open, and and, and they're really good at finding those guys. Um, if you don't make those plays and you don't make the extra efforts, it's going to be hard to defend that way. 
um, and they put you in a bind and make you defend that way. So it's one of those things that if we don't do, we won't, we won't end up on the good side of things, and we know that. Um, it's something you got to put your heart on and get done. There was a play in the second half on the right side of the court where you kind of came up grimacing. You know, what, what happened on that play, and are you feeling fine after that? Um, yeah, I like just a little knee to knee. I'm fine, though. They came out the third quarter, went on a little run, felt like Kyrie was, was getting rolling, cut it to one. What was the key to how you guys responded after that? Uh, <clears throat> um, we just try to focus on the next possession. Um, and playing against a, a team that shoots the ball the way they do, you know that they can get hot, they can go on runs in the game. You never really have complete control of the game, and you never are out of a game. Um, that's the mindset we try to take. We just try to focus on the next possession, um, and we stack possessions for that next five minutes or so, and then got back to lead. Will, will you watch the MVP announcement tomorrow? Um, sure, why not? If I'm at home doing nothing. Is there a level, like, do you feel any anxiousness for it all or I mean like how are you kind of viewing that day being that you're a finalist um, I didn't know it was tomorrow um, but it's cool I'm excited to see who wins um, Shay this season or earlier today Josh called you an unselfish superstar and just praised the way you get your teammates involved and you've mentioned trust among your teammates and the camaraderie, camaraderie you guys have like we've seen the barking and the fun stuff but like how much of that off court I guess activity and friendship between you guys has helped the on-court chemistry and trust you guys have. Yeah, um, it goes hand in hand. Um, it makes it easier for us to play for each other and with each other, just because we, um, off the court, we know like each and every one of our teammates has our back and really cares for our well-being. Um, and then in turn, just when you get out there, you're you're playing for something bigger than just yourself. Yeah, Chad. Um, it seemed like as the game was going along on those on your drives, you're getting a little bit more and more patient, uh, just waiting to see where you can get, have an advantage. What was uh, what was your mindset on as the game went along? Yeah, I just wanted to go out there and be aggressive, but uh, make the right play. I feel like I did a pretty good job. Um, you know, I didn't convert on every single uh, time down, but um, you know, the other team's not just going to let you, so it's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, I got to continue to come back and be better in that area. Uh, as well as other areas for the next game. And, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do tomorrow at practice. Hey, Chet, obviously a lot of talk about the scoring that Kyrie and Luca can do defensively. What were you most pleased with, just the way you guys handled them today? Um, I mean, it's easy to look at the outcome and, uh, you know, try and be satisfied with, uh, you know, what the outcome was tonight. But, uh, you know, we know those are – two extremely great players with, you know, a great team around them and, you know, a great coaching staff. So they're going to throw all types of different looks at us. And, uh, you know, that's what we were trying to do tonight, uh, throw different looks at them. And, um, you know, they're going to adjust. They're going to watch film. They're going to do all that stuff and be ready for next game. So we got to continue to do the same. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you always want to come out on the winning side, and that's what we did tonight. But we understand there's no being pleased, uh, you know, in a playoff series. Uh, you know, the series isn't over, uh, so we still got a lot of a lot of work to do. Chet, not not focusing on the outcome of the defense, but the process. When you're hedging out on Luca, on an island, kind of on the perimeter, you got your reach up. They're trying to block his view. What's kind of your thought process? What are you evaluating as he's kind of probing and looking at what's going on behind you? Uh, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to make it as hard as possible for him. Uh, it sounds like I'm trying to dumb it down for you, but I'm really not. That's that's all it is. Just be as active as I can and, um, you know, make it as hard as we can on him. Uh, you know, again, great player uh, who's been making huge plays for a long time. So, uh, you know, you just got to go make it as tough as you can uh, and understand that, you know, he's going to make big shots, make big plays, and that you just have to, you know, kind of trust, trust, you know, what you prepared for and, and what the team's been doing to prepare uh, uh, and trust that that's going to, you know, put you in the, on the right path.